Support our ministry today by liking this video on our YouTube or Facebook page. Good morning and welcome to our Sunday School lesson. My name is Reverend Theron L. Jones I and I'm an Associate Minister at the Greater Queens Missionary Baptist Church located in Chicago, Illinois, where our pastor is the Reverend Kevin Wilkes. Let us open with a word of prayer. Father God, teach me your ways that I might be more like you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, and thank God. Our lesson for today is entitled, Need for Just Leaders. And our lesson scripture, background scripture is Malachi chapter two and chapter three. And our main thought or the memory verse is Malachi chapter 2, verse 2, which reads, If ye will not hear, and if ye will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name, saith the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings, yea, I have cursed them already because ye did not lay it to heart. Need for just leaders. As leaders in God's church, the body of Christ, we must always be just and righteous. Just means to treat everyone justly according to God's word. And righteous means to do the right thing, always. There's not a right time for the right thing. We're supposed to do the right thing all the time. And all God's people must exercise God's justice and righteousness at all times. We don't get to pick and choose what we feel is just or what we feel is right. Because God's word tells us what's just and right. And in this lesson, the leaders were failing to answer. No, they had answered the call, but they were failing to carry out the responsibilities and the duties of the calling. And when we fail to do exactly, we don't get to add nothing to it, we don't get to take nothing away from it, when we fail to do exactly what God called us to do, there can be nothing but failure and hurt. Because as the leader, you must lead by example. And disobedience, that in that lesson, that verse to them, I will curse your blessings. You can have a blessing coming. And because of disobedience, that blessing can become a curse. What was once looked all wonderful and good and advantageous, can turn into something terribly and to your disadvantage because of disobedience. And a lot of times I believe us as Christians, we don't understand exactly what disobedience does. Think about it. Let's go back to the Garden of Eden. Disobedience destroyed God's original plan, even though he knew it was going to happen. Not Eve, because God didn't talk to Eve. God told Adam what to do and not to do. And when he disobeyed, it put us to where we are right now today. And we've been going down that downward spiral ever since. But as leaders, Adam was the call leader of mankind. He's the first man, the only man God created. 
Then he gave him one man and to, for them to multiply and populate the world. But because of Adam's not being the leader that God called him to be, we are in the situation that we're in today. And when you don't follow God's will, not only as a leader, but just as fellow Christians, and you are disobedient, you don't have to answer for that. You're going to have to answer. It's going to come back, to, as they say, bite us in one way or the other. Because either you're doing God's will or you're not doing God's will. There's no in-between. There's no line that we can walk down to stay on the fence. Either it's for God or it's for the world. And God never changes. It tells us. He tells us. Jesus said, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we have to, through prayer and the study of God's word, be the same way. Yes, we live in a corrupt, evil world, but we, through studying the God's word, praying, and trying through the power of the Holy Spirit, being the best that we can be on this day, we have to stay on the straight and narrow. He said, wide is the gate, the road, but narrow is the path. And that road will get you in trouble. But if you stay on God's path, you can't go wrong. It don't mean that everything is going to be rosy and the way you think or I think it's going to be, it's going to be the way God wants it to be. And as God's leader, you got to have faith that you're being led by God. And if you have the faith the size of a grain of a mustard seed, Matthews, you can move a mountain. But when we go to our own understanding, we become part of the world. And accountability. A just leader, first of all, you got to be accountable to God. Then we have to be accountable to everybody else. There ain't no long rangers Christians out there. God wants us, first of all, to work together. Then second of all, he wants us to help one another. And I'm going to drop this in your lap. A lot of people don't believe this and don't think of it. As Christians, we all are God's leaders. None of us get to sit back on a pew and just wait for heaven to call us home. We all are leaders. Once we become a Christian and accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we become part of God's army. And we have to lead. Not necessarily, I don't mean that you a deacon or pastor, the head of this ministry, none of that. But we are leaders in this world of sin to show the sinful world the righteousness and the justice of God. From the youngest to the oldest, whether you in school, in the corporate America, or whatever your profession is, you are to be a leader where God has placed you. And when we lead according to God's will, yes, People are not going to like it sometimes. People are going to raise up against you. But when you are following the Spirit of God, 
He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Paul said, I counted all joy, the trials and the tribulations that I go through in the name of Jesus Christ. In other words, if you got to be beat up, get beat up for Jesus because he got your back. And he ain't never going to give you more than you can bear. And he's going to lead you exactly the way he would have you to go. And verse 7, it talks about, For the priest's lips should not keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth, God's mouth, for he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. Leaders speak for God. If you're leading God's people, then you got to speak for God. And in order to speak for God, you got to follow God. And those called to lead God's people would have to answer for not doing the job correctly. Yes. It's a ministry. It's your spiritual job. And God wants you to do it right the first time. Because he already gave you the books. He gave you the instructions. He gave you Genesis to Revelation. Revelation. You don't have to guess. You don't have to think. Just do what thus say the Lord. And yes, we're going to stumble. We're going to fall. But guess what? I'm going to say it again. God got your back. And as long as God got your back, he promised us that no weapon formed against us show prosper and I don't know about you but this lesson for just leaders I look at oftentimes I look at some of the so-called churches or the people as I call it spiritual pimping on TV not all of them but some of them you got to listen to what a person is saying. Does it line up with the will of God? So do your work. That you can know. That the leader. Is doing his work. And again we thank you. For being a part of our Sunday school. And let us pray as always. God bless. And God keep us all. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We hope and pray that this Sunday School lesson has helped you to learn just a little bit more about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We look forward to seeing you at one of our services, Sunday School at 10 o'clock, worship service at 1130. Until then, tell somebody you love.